The Tasking Manager is a website that helps organize volunteers for mapping projects. The idea is that if someone like a humanitarian or aid group wants to map out a certain area in OpenStreetMap, the Tasking Manager is used to divide the area into a series of squares, which different volunteers can claim and work on. This helps everyone see how much progress they've made, and make sure that multiple people aren't editing the exact same place, which could be confusing or cause errors. The Humanitarian OpenStreetMap team, or HOT, Tasking Manager, is probably the most well-known Tasking Manager site, which we're going to look at in this video. HOT is a nonprofit organization that works with aid, humanitarian, and disaster response organizations to help map before, during, or after disasters and crises. These organizations work with HOT to set up tasks to coordinate volunteers who want to map on OpenStreetMap. Then those groups, and anyone else, can use the data in their own work. There's a lot of examples of this working well, in the response to Ebola, the Philippines typhoon, the Nepal earthquake, and many more. The Tasking Manager website is free and open source, too, so anyone can start their own with a bit of work. Universities use it with their students, for example. To use the HOT Tasking Manager, go to tasks.hotosm.org. Then on the upper right-hand corner, click Log In. It may ask you to log in to your OpenStreetMap account. Do so, then click Grant Access. If it's the first time you've logged into the Tasking Manager, click your username at the upper right, then click Your Profile. You'll see your mapping stats and some links with more information about how you've participated so far. There's also a button that says Add Edit Contact Details. You can click on that and add your email address. This will make sure you get messages about the project, like if it's complete or there's an update on how the data has been used in the field. It can be a neat way to see how your mapping has made an impact. Now let's go back to the main Tasking Manager page. If you're ready to map, you can click Start Mapping. To learn about HOT's work or how to map, scroll down. The Learn More link has tutorial videos about mapping, plus other information about HOT. Once you click Start Mapping, you'll see a list of current projects. Each one has some information about it. The title, the priority level, the difficulty, and other information. Click on one of the projects to see what it looks like. You'll see a description of the project, and why we're working on it. Make sure to read that to understand the goal of the project. Now let's scroll down. There are four tabs, Instructions, Map, Validate, and Questions and Comments. And there's a map with different colored squares. This is the area we'll be working on. There's a legend on the map that explains what the colors of the squares mean. Ready means the task can be worked on. The yellow map squares means someone has already mapped there and thinks the area is complete. Gray bad imagery squares mean it's difficult to see in that area. Green means validated, and red means invalidated. Validation is when someone else checks the square to make sure it's complete, that all the data is correct and thorough. Usually, more senior mappers do the validating. Lock squares are ones that are currently being worked on. Only one person can work on a task square at a time. Next, we'll look at the instructions. The instructions include more detail about what to map, and how to map. The instructions are important and different for each project, so make sure to read them carefully before mapping. It's also important to only map what is mentioned in the instructions. After reading the instructions, you can click either the Map button at the bottom or the Map tab at the top to start mapping. You can either click on a square or pick one at random. The Validate button and Validate tab are for experienced mappers who want to double check that finished squares are complete. If you are new to mapping, you can skip this tab for now. The last tab is Questions and Comments. This is the place to ask for help or clarification on the project. Click Contact Project Manager to include their username, then ask your question here. Let's go back to the main Tasking Manager window. If you already have a project you want to work on, go ahead and search for it now, or just click on one that looks interesting. You can also search for the project number, or filter by difficulty level, types of mapping, or a campaign to work on. If you're new, it's good to select Beginner. Buildings tasks are often good for new mappers as well. Once you've selected a project, pick a task square to work on. It will highlight. Then click the orange Start Mapping button. This will lock the square so others know you're working on it. Then click Start Editor. This will open up a new browser window and you can start mapping. The pink box you see is your task square. Make sure not to map outside of that square as someone else might be mapping the next square over. It's also important to zoom in before you start mapping. It's possible some features won't appear when you're zoomed out. If you think your task square is too large, or it's a dense area like a city, you can split it into smaller pieces. Just click the Split Task button. When you've finished editing and have saved your edits, go to the browser window for the Tasking Manager. If you've completed an entire task square, good for you. Leave a little message that explains what you did, and click Mark as completely mapped. If you're not done, no problem. Just leave a little note for the next person, and click Stop Mapping. That means someone else can come and finish your square later. 
If the imagery is not good in the area and you're not able to map, click Mark as Bad Imagery. The Tasking Manager is a great way to organize large mapping projects and break them into bite-sized pieces so mappers from around the world can collaborate and create data that everyone can use. Let's get started.